Okay, so whenever you have a, um, a quadratic equation that starts with x squared and stuff, you can always solve it by completing the square. Let me now show you what you would do if you actually have something in front of the x squared. Suppose we have 2x squared plus 4x minus 1 equals 0. Now if you want to complete the square, what you want to do is reduce it to the other case I talked about when in fact there was only a 1 in front of this. So whenever you have sort of stuff in front of this, the first step is just to divide everything through, both sides, so you don't change anything, by that coefficient. And that way you've reduced it down to something with an x squared and you can use the method I just explained. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 2. That means I have to divide every single term by 2. So here it cancels out, which was the whole point of this. Here I have a plus 2x. And here, it's a little bit annoying, I have a minus 1 half, because I have a minus 1 over 2. And that equals 0 over anything is just still 0. OK, great. Well, now I've back to the case that I talked about with a 1 in front of here. So now I can actually use the completing the square method I described, which was, let me remind you, you bring all the constant terms over to this side, take the thing in front of the x, take half of it, and square it, and add it to both sides. So let's try that right now x squared plus 2x, and I always leave a big space here, and I bring this over, it becomes now a positive, a half. Now what I want to do is add something to both sides. What do I do? I take this thing in front of the x, take half of it, which would be 1, and square 1. Squaring 1 is just 1, so I'd add that to both sides, plus 1, plus 1. I have to add to both sides in order to keep this thing balanced. You can't, if you were to do that technique with the original thing, with the 2 there, in fact, this will not factor nicely into a perfect square. So always remember to first clear away that coefficient by dividing everything through by the coefficient and getting it down to this, and then it'll work. OK, let's see what happens. Well, this should factor into a perfect square. Should be that. And you can check it and see that x times x is x squared. The inside term is x. Another term is x. That's 2x. 1 plus 1 is 1. And 1 times 1 is 1. What do we have on this side? Here we have 1 and a half. And what's 1 and a half? 1 and a half is just 3 halves. So that's where we are right now. OK, well, how do we solve? Well, now I've got a perfect square. So I can take plus or minus square roots of both sides. So let's try that. If I take plus or minus square roots of both sides, what I see is x plus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. Now, that square root is on everything, including that little 2, which is pathetically drawn on the bottom there. Now I want to bring the 1 over, so I subtract the 1. And so what I see is x equals minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. Now that can't be simplified anymore, although some people might like you to rationalize the denominator. So if you want to do that, let me just show you what that would be really fast, remind you how that goes. That would be the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 2. I'd multiply top and bottom by the square root of 2. And that would give me the square root of 6 on top. And on the bottom, I'd have square root of 2 times square root of 2 is just 2. So that's, a, that's an equal. That's an equal thing to this. But it has no denominator with a square root. Square root of 6 over 2. So you could say the answer is x equals minus 1 plus the square root of 6 over 2. Or the other answer is x equals minus 1 minus the square root of 6 over 2. So those are the two answers to the original uh, quadratic equation. That one, by the way, remind you, is way over here. And it turns out these two answers satisfy that. Notice that, again, these aren't nice numbers like 3 and minus 5. And that's because this thing couldn't be factored. So now we're seeing that we can even solve quadratic equations where we can't even factor it. Well, we could take this basic principle, this principle of completing the square, and if we do it in general with not particular numbers, but just with any old things in there, we'd actually produce a formula that would always solve a quadratic equation. And this is known as the quadratic formula. And we'll see that next time.